Hey there, Data Nation, it's Ryan, and today we're gonna to talk about how to use data analytics to optimize marketing. Now, what I've drawn out here is a basic marketing funnel that starts off at awareness, and moves all the way through to people considering doing their research for your products or services, and ultimately buying. Think of data at each stage in this cycle as being signals on whether or not your brand is resonating with the right audience. Each signal is a data point that we can analyze and in the future we can optimize to improve performance over time. At the awareness stage, we have things like views or impressions, which really doesn't tell us a whole lot about whether or not we're resonating with the right target audience. Platforms like Google and Facebook will report the number of impressions for ads that you're distributing in their networks. But this data set on its own is not very compelling. It doesn't tell us a whole lot about how we're resonating. The first data analytics KPI at this stage is click-through rate also known as CTR. The click-through rate is a ratio that tells us the total number of clicks divided by the total number of impressions. This could also be looked at as the total number of people who saw our ads versus the total number of people who are interested in our brand. Click-through rate is great at telling us whether or not our brand awareness campaigns are resonating with the target audience, but it doesn't necessarily identify who's a buyer and who's not. Once somebody has clicked through, they're considered an engaged user, at this stage, they may have liked or commented on a post that you had on social media or clicked through to your website where we can start to analyze their on-site behavior. As users get closer to making their buying decision, there's a few other important metrics for us to consider. One of these metrics is your average session duration and tools like Google Analytics will be able to report this information to you. Now again, average session duration doesn't tell you exactly what you need to know about whether or not you're engaging the right buyers. What it will tell you is that this audience is a lot more qualified than the people who bounce. Bouncers are people who land on your website typically by accident and then leave before proceeding to any other page on the site. For those who don't bounce, we wanna look at how they're navigating your website down through to making a purchase decision. One of the typical metrics at this stage is going to be the number of pages they viewed. For a website that's really intuitive, you're probably going to see a majority of the people land on the home page, but then proceed down through to maybe category pages, looking at the blogs or other articles, and ultimately going either to a contact us page or a product page to proceed down the funnel further. The next important metric we're going to look at is the number of people who convert, whether into a lead or a paying customer. Our definition of converters is anybody who submits their contact information or picks up the phone to call in order to get the process started. There are several different types of conversions, but typically it involves somebody submitting some of their contact information, whether it be an email, picking up the phone to call you, submitting a contact form, or with e-commerce businesses actually making a purchase. Our key data analytics metric at this stage is conversion rate, also known as CVR. Now, not all converters are gonna become customers. In fact, our experience has showed us that for a service-based business or a B2B business, most often only about a third of the people who actually fill out a contact form or pick up the phone actually become a qualified customer. And for e-commerce businesses, only about 3% of the people who visit your website are actually going to buy from you. Now I'm gonna run through a few quick examples that can help illustrate using data analytics at each stage of the buying cycle. Let's say you run a new ad campaign and you have 100,000 people looking at your ads or 100,000 impressions. From that, you see 1,000 people click through to your website. That equates to a 1% click-through rate. Of the 1,000 people that click through, let's say that 50% of them bounce when they first hit your website, leaving us with 500 left. And we also see that on average, those users visit 10 different pages on the website. Of the remaining 500 users, 20 of them end up converting for a conversion rate of 4%, which equates to a 50% close rate on leads. All right, so overall from 100,000 views or impressions in the marketplace, we ended up with 10 paying customers. It's not bad depending on how much money you've invested in that one specific campaign. Now that we have all the key data analytics metrics in place, we're gonna to wanna to identify areas in which we can optimize for future improvement. 
Typically, we will actually start at the bottom of the funnel versus the top of the funnel as if we were to improve one of those metrics by just a small percentage, it's gonna vastly improve sales. So the first thing we would focus on is improving the close rate. Now the close rate, depending on the type of organization you're in, may be very difficult to improve. If your company is business to business or service-based, you might have sales reps in place. From a marketing perspective, there's not too much we can do other than maybe help to nurture new leads that entered the funnel or provide additional collateral that they can use to close. But it may fall on the sales manager's shoulders to improve this specific metric. Moving on up the funnel, we look at the conversion rate. Now, depending on the industry you're in, a 4% conversion rate might be actually quite good. For e-commerce, it would actually be considered above average. In the B2B space or for local businesses, you're probably going to be aiming more towards 5 to 10% conversion rates. Some of the things you can do to improve conversion rates include optimizing the website's design, providing more clear calls to action, or changing up the hierarchy of your website to have a more intuitive flow. The other thing that we don't talk about as often is how people actually get to your website. You may see things like organic traffic coming to your website and having a really low conversion rate. And this could just be that people are finding you through the wrong channels or they're searching something out and somehow landing on your site. Conversion rate from channels like organic are a little bit more difficult to control. Whereas with advertising platforms, we can target on a much more granular basis, both the individuals that are receiving our message as well as the types of messages that are going out. Moving a little further up, let's look at the engagement on the website. Improving user engagement on the website can be a little bit trickier. In general, some of the things that we've seen that help improve the on-site time as well as the number of pages that people visit are things like incorporating embedded videos on the page, providing supplemental resources such as a learning center, downloadable white papers, things like that. And again, just kind of restructuring and reorganizing the website so that people are finding their way down the funnel in an intuitive way. Moving the next step up to the bounce rate. Bounce rate is an indication of the relevance of the ad that you created to the page that the person goes to. Meaning the marketing message you put out maybe didn't get addressed when the person actually clicked through it and landed on the page. Oftentimes, if you're promoting a specific product or service, through a brand awareness campaign like the one in this example, and then you take them, say, to like your homepage or your contact us page that doesn't have a lot of good supplemental information, you're gonna see a higher bounce rate. Similarly, with your click-through rate, if your click-through rate is pretty low, it might mean that you're reaching the wrong target audience. Your messaging might be fine and relevant, but if you're not reaching the right audience, you're not gonna necessarily see the click-throughs that you're looking for. Make sure that, especially with advertising promotion, you're using the platform's tools to target the right ideal buyer audience. And if you don't know who the right audience is, continue to test and see what you can do to improve this click-through rate here. And that's a wrap on today's data download. If you like this format of me walking through examples using the whiteboard, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you have additional questions or if you'd like to see additional walkthroughs kind of like this one or more specific topics, also let me know in the comments. If you really like this video, smash that like button. And as always, subscribe to get datafied.